This episode of Film Rides brought to you by FreshBooks. Welcome to another episode of Film Rights Epic Summer. Today we have Ben Worley on the show. He did a lot of the music for Seth Worley's short film Real Gone and the music packs that we sell in our Triune store. You guys submitted a bunch of questions on composing music for film for Ben to answer, so let's do that. Where do you get your assets from? I use a lot of different samples. I use East West Quantum Leap is what I used for a long time uh, when I first had uh, orchestra samples. And now I use I think Hollywood Brass and Hollywood Strings and a bunch of other Hollywood packs that East West has and they're just amazing. And I use their play engine as well that's uh, to, as the plugin to use it all. For synths, I use Omnisphere and uh, it's just the most incredible pack of synths in the world. It's this universe that you think you have used up and then uh, three or four years later of owning it, I still haven't used it all up and I'm still amazed whenever I open it. I'm like, wow, there's, there's just so, like, the, I've not used this sound before but I, Thought I'd used it all up, but it's just amazing. What is the biggest no-no when it comes to music and videos? There's a million mistakes you can make doing a score because it's a completely different process than songwriting. I've worked with songwriters and I've worked with other people who do like film score stuff and they are, it's a completely different mindset, I think. You kind of have to know, there's parts of it there where you really do have to abandon just the song. You can't just think about the song, you have to think about the video too, think about the film, where it's going, the story, and there's a lot of elements and a lot of songwriting is you're coming up with the story as you write the song. And there's, I don't know, it's different. The other thing is, um, with film score is overriding, uh, way too, writing way too much music for the film that isn't needed and like uh, just not giving any sort of breathing space for the film and the music to kind of regroup and start back to kind of keep the film moving. It distracts me when the music is constantly going on because it, I don't feel like there, it's, anything's moving in any motion. And I'm sure there's totally exceptions to that, but I feel like a lot of times that's a big problem you can have. How do you find out how to blend the two tones seamlessly together while keeping it incredibly dramatic? Well, I mean, the answer is actually kind of funny. Uh, in my opinion, and especially in Seth's opinion who taught me this, you don't blend the two tones together, uh, if it's, especially if it's a comedy. If it's a comedy and it's got some dramatic tones or it's got that like darkness or you know maybe it's an action sequence in a comedy or something like that. Basically every comedy I ever do, which is like everything I ever do for Seth, I always play, the, play stupid. Like in Real Gone, this guy's really trying to kill himself. That's how it's approached. It's, it's not, oh it's funny because he's not. The music is oblivious to that fact. In fact, it's most of what the music I wrote for Real Gone, I didn't do any of the comedic timing. It's a lot of it's just cut off by the joke. If you watch the Lego movie, Mark Mothersbaugh scored the whole thing like it's like it's this giant epic thing and did some comedic timing, but it, I mean it's he commits completely to the joke to where the music isn't just being fun and laughing along with the audience. It's it's selling the joke really hard by making it as serious and real and organic as possible. What can we do as directors to help you, the composer, better understand the goal of the project and the scenes? Something Seth does really well. He'll say, like, months before we've ever even started on a project, he'll be like, hey, so I have this idea for a project, or hey, we're doing this project coming up. It's a long way away, but the idea is this, and we'll laugh about it, we'll make jokes about it, and I'll feel like I'm, you know, I'm kind of a part of how it develops. But also, he'll, he'll tell me it way beforehand, and then I'll have already had, I've, I've got all these ideas working, and brewing with no clue what he's thinking or doing. I just have all these ideas going. And then when he finally brings me something to go off of, usually before we've even started filming, then I can start fine tuning my ideas to his as we go. And then by the time I've started working on music, we already have a really great direction on where we're going with it. And I don't feel like I'm being dropped in with a month or not even a month to do music and having to catch up because you as the director have probably been just obsessing over this idea or know everything about it, have every detail figured out. And you know, it's like, you, you got it all figured out and I don't, I have no idea, I'm catching up and I'm trying to ask questions and trying to learn. And a lot of times for short films, you really don't have that much turnaround for the music. So bring in your composer in on the idea, uh, bring them in, you know, when you start pre-production, have them come in as you're planning so they know what's going on. Um, and I realize that's hard when you don't have already have a composer you regularly work with, but if you already have an idea of who you want to hire, I would bring them in as soon as possible. Who is your favorite composer aside from John Williams? Ever since like early high school, I played um, Medal of Honor, which was scored by Michael Giacchino and actually really liked the music and looked him up and then started following him ever since he started in video games. And I've always liked him. He's always been a huge inspiration. I'm sure that's really obvious. A lot of people tell me that my music sounds like his music or is a total ripoff of his music and both are true. If you compose music ever since you were young, do you really need to study scoring? I hate 
to answer this question because I think it definitely, it's different for everyone. I would say no based on my circumstances and my circumstances were that I had really great opportunities. I had opportunities to make music around, uh, around me and given to me and um, some people don't. Some people go through high school not knowing what they wanna do and maybe they should go to school so that they can figure out, oh my gosh, I wanna be a composer. Or maybe they thought they did but they weren't sure or whatever. Uh, maybe they really wanna be a composer but haven't getting, gotten any opportunities and a lot of people who go to film school get opportunities they couldn't have gotten and opportunities that I don't get. Speaking from my own experience, I don't think you need it. I don't think you need to pay for it. I think if you can find someone and uh, anyone at all who's better than you and get them to teach you things or watch them work so that you can learn things. I think that's a great way to learn and I think you don't have to blow all your money on school. Do you even dubstep? Does this answer your question? How do I know I found the right music for my film? When you know for sure that you've legally acquired this music, that's probably when you know. How would we hire you for our short film? Probably the best way to hire me is to contact me on Twitter at subtumble, S-U-B tumble. Um, and there's a contact button on my website, which is benworley.com, I, I, either one. Oh, and then you know, you should probably take a business card. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so just, that's got all of it on there. <laughs> You're just a stupid son of a bitch. FreshBooks makes things simple, but their specialty is to make your life easier when it comes to invoicing, getting paid, and tracking expenses. If you're doing any freelance work or have a business of any kind on the side or full time, you need to know about FreshBooks. It's an online tool and the absolute easiest way to get all your accounting done super fast. Everyone dreads doing stuff like sending invoices and getting your numbers straight, but that is where FreshBooks makes everything really simple. Your clients can pay you online, your expenses are automatically tracked as you spend, and all the little details about cash flow are in one place so you always know where you Stand. It'll even let you see the full history of any invoice so you'll know if your client has looked at your invoice or not. So head over to freshbooks.com slash film riot and don't forget to enter film riot in the how did you hear about us section. So that's it for today. Thank you to Ben for taking the time to answer the questions. If you want to follow the rest of the collaborators and other crew members involved in Seth's short film, check the notes below and we'll see you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.